we are living in an era that calls for sustainability with our 326 million vehicles on the road road transportation contributes to 20 to 30 percentage of emissions in india promoting electric vehicles alone might not always do the trick of bringing in a sustainable alternative for the country public transportation in this essence might serve as an alternative for bringing in a green future for the country when we are talking about public transportation we have a new act called the all india tourist permit act or the rule all india tourist permit rules which is also referred to as aatp which the central government brought out to promote public transportation in the country when the aatp act came out itself it created headlines and controversies with regard to a lot of discrepancies in the act according to the policy makers in order to demystify the all india tourist permit act we have with us retired senior deputy transport commissioner mr bj anthony sir welcome to our podcast sir thank you uh, and sir we can just begin by explaining to our audience what the aatp act is and like how how can we simplify the aatp act to the common audience i would say the all india tourist vehicle permit rules 2023 this very liberalized in terms of operation of uh, a public transport in pan india the main object of the 2019 amendment is seamless mobility for the people to attain this seamless mobility the central government has introduced many sections in the amendment act and consequently the flow of people to be without any interruption and they have removed the necessity of checking border checking spots of various states enabling the hassle free movement of the people for various purpose of their daily uh, journey and while come to the new provisions for the all india tourist vehicle permit recently the rules has been changed very liberally enabling a new operator can conduct a tourist vehicle operation inter city in in inter inter state or in through any states of india without going to the mainly without going to the offices of the motor vehicle department or transport department which is notoriously famous for its uh, uh, corruption and uh, there is deeming provision very interesting deeming provision in the motor vehicles all india tourist vehicle uh, rules that when a properly applied permit application is filed within 7 days the authority has to issue a permit otherwise the system itself will give a permit to the applicant and there is no face to face uh, there is no need of face to face transaction there only online application is there and further we while we going to the all india tourist vehicle permit regulation or rules existed previously there was some uh, limitation or conditions uh, which is very tight for the operators to manage and the government is understood the difficulties and for the movement of people government is very liberal liberal uh, to the operators to to establish their business flourishly uh, removing almost all the hurdles clutched with the all india permit rules and in presently our rules was effective with effect from may 2023 the draft of the same was published before march and uh, objections were called and finally uh, uh, rules were pub- published and the very very attractive features or salient features of these rules are uh, 
the rule does not bind the uh, operator uh, uh, regarding the central motor vehicle rules 82 to 85a wherein it is specifically mentioned that the vehicle shall not be used as uh, stage garage and uh, the all india permit vehicle shall not tender in the public stage garage bus stops that is very very interesting because uh, there is no need of a connectivity with the stage garage and uh, a contract garage by introducing these bus stand rules okay sir uh, so from the description you gave itself it's clear that the atp would make headlines and it did actually in a, uh, you know in the region in the regional aspect and both in the national aspect so like you already said like uh, that something you know when we talk about the atp permit itself uh, one of the it's it's a one of a kind act or a rule where you know, the system itself is granting permit when the uh, the bureaucracy or the system that the government system that is already in place is uh, failing uh, in a say in a way uh, to maybe promote the uh, transportation system which it should be doing so like what is your personal take on it like uh, when should will the atp work and is the atp like uh, what whom does it favor the central government the state government or the operators who want to Uh, start a business in the transportation sector itself in my view the present day aatp rules will favor mainly to the public in terms of seamless transport and the public will get a more transportation facility the competition will be high the better facility will be given then the second uh, party uh, who take advantage on this uh, uh rules are operators operators should be benefited otherwise uh, it is a business also it is a service also and it is also a business a business should be uh, hassle free it, sh- it should be uh, e- easy to operate then that easiness has been given maximum in this rules and hence i would say the atp rules will be benefit for benefit for, for the uh, traveling public and the operators concerned uh, sir uh, you also mentioned the stage carriers permits per se so i am guessing our audience actually know what a stage carriers what a contract carriers and what the atp so maybe sir you can you just take them through like what is the, like how can we differentiate the atp permit from maybe per se contract carriers like uh, the general notion is that the atp permit should only be used for tourism purpose because in the act also it says in order to promote tourism activities also in the country the uh, government is bringing out with an uh, with a new act or a provision so like sir does that go by that way yes yes it it, it, it would promote tourism also because there is no uh, hassle so there is no uh, barrier uh, for the seamless uh, travel of the tourist also but and the, the permit itself uh, means that it is it is for promoting the tourism then then what is tourism that is the question arises but uh, nowhere in the act uh, the tourism is defined but uh, the tourist the relation of tourism with this all india tourist vehicle permit is that a tourist vehicle owner shall be issued with a tourist vehicle permit and it uh, whether it is carrying tourist or not that's the thing then the relevance of tourism or exclusiveness of tourism is not much there in my view and this is a contract carriage basically the all india tourist vehicles are contract carriage vehicles contract carriages are defined in section 27 of the motor vehicles uh, act and uh, that is a, uh, that is a vehicle plying with passengers under a contract that's the contract carriage while coming to the tourist vehicle the definition is also 
therefore tourist vehicle tourist vehicle means is it's a contract carriage having some other facilities it's not it's not, a, not not a normal contract carriage the tourist vehicle means a contract carriage equipped with uh, some facilities for the passengers for the long distance especially for the long distance passengers mainly the comfort in the seats etc etc there are there are the many specification is mentioned uh, mentioned means it is expressly mentioned in rule 128 to the motor vehicles act the uh, the equipments the additional equipments etc to be uh, with the all india tourist vehicles and the word tourist is not much related to the tourist vehicle permit okay sir uh, so if i am right uh, on a 2019 high court judgment regarding the interstate buses uh, which sometimes use contract carriage permits and sometimes use the atp permit itself so it was uh, the the definition of the term contract of the passengers was you know it made headlines uh, in during that time where uh, how the contract should be it should it be from uh, uh, the destination the point of origin and the destination of the bus permit or can they take in passengers in between so how does that apply for the atp and the contract here is like what is the distinction there i understand what you mean is uh, whether the a contract carriage can fly with setting down passengers on en route or pick up passengers from en route exactly whether it yeah. right okay yeah. that is clearly mentioned in the contract carriage definition itself Yeah, in the last part of the definition, it is mentioning like that: uh, no passengers shall be set down or pick up from en route. That is not stopping there. En route, comma, who are not included in the contract, which means the passengers included in the contract can be set down or pick up from the. and rule it is not necessary if there is a demand of setting down or picking up passengers from the en route it is permissible in the contract carriage itself contract carriage is below the tourist vehicle and tourist vehicle also is a contract carriage and tourist vehicle can also pick up or set down passengers on the en route if that passengers are entered with a contract with the operator concerned whether expressed or implied okay so what most of us don't know regarding the atp is that uh, it was there before 2023 also so so what what are the salient features that you know define or differentiate the new pro, new act from its predecessors yes there there was uh, all india permit rules previously uh during 92020 also and before that also there was all india permit uh, rules and procedures there but the uh, after the introduction of 88 act the uh, all india tourist vehicle uh, rules were there there was con- there was so many conditions for operation of a tourist vehicle that uh, which is stipulates in the rules uh, 82 to 85 of central motor vehicle rules and many conditions are one of the uh, some main items i can uh, say that on it the tourist vehicle shall not operate as stage carriage then other one is the tourist vehicle shall not enter uh, the best stands uh, year marked for stage carriages as such restrictions were there and that restrictions are removed in the recent uh, all india tourist vehicle permit rules further uh, in the present rules there is no authorization fee previously there was an authorization fee uh, collecting uh, collected for the stage the vehicles entering because if if the vehicle is entering four stage the four authorization fees has to be remitted that is removed if the vehicle is uh, uh, going to 10 state 10 authorization fees has to be uh, given 
that that provision is removed in the present day, day. and the main main highlight is the uh, online filing of uh, application and uh, the very short term uh, consideration period that is within seven days the authority shall uh, consider the uh, permit application and uh, arrive in a final decision and if they are failing to arrive within seven days in a final decision uh, the system itself give a permit to the operator uh, without considering any objection of the authority and there is no need of uh, face to face transaction with the transport authorities uh, uh, with the operators concerned that's the main feature and further uh, when a business opportunity is there and the hassles are removed the, uh, the, uh, the number of business, uh, businessmen will come more business will uh, men will come to the field and field will be more flourished with uh, high competition favoring the public uh, sir it's uh, interesting that you mentioned that so being a native of kerala and living here for the past 19 years i can say that i have seen the rise and fall of uh, kerala's public transportation so like we 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 were lucky enough to have a very good number of both uh, privately operated and the state SU operated buses on the ground but uh, sadly in 2011 we were struck down by the route nationalization which actually took away a lot of buses from our uh, roads uh, which resulted in a dip in the public transportation and I personally believe that uh, that is actually the reason for the increasing number of two-wheeler sales in India in Kerala maybe because uh, the lack of buses actually pulled back the passengers from the buses onto the scooters but we, we can't throw that. Uh, sir, so when the AADP Act came in, I was happy that there is a way where uh, you know private operators can bring in uh, buses into the state uh, and uh, run them. Uh, but seeing like uh, being here, you must have seen what happened to the AATP operators who want, wanted to uh, operate uh, in Kerala itself. Like the Kerala uh, government was of the stand that uh, you can't, uh, like uh, the provision won't allow buses to operate in uh, Kerala. So like uh, how we have seen that from many state governments opposing the AATP, uh, stating that there is a revenue dip. Sir, uh, then in that case also like uh, does the state governments, uh, it's it's clear that the ATP is a central uh, government driven uh, measure to maybe promote tourism and transportation. So like are the state uh, governments in power to maybe uh, bypass it or you know prevent ATP permits uh, from being in operation in their homes? Yes, home very valid well question. But uh, the thing is, uh, why the issue of permit? Issue permit mentioned in, uh, as I said, the several sections of the Motor Vehicles Act, Section 72, Section 74, etc. And uh, the issue in authority has some jurisdiction. If we require a permit in Ernabulam district, we have to apply to the Ernabulam RTA. But if you want a permit for two RTAs, the case is different. We have to obtain concurrence from the other RTAs, then obtain a permit from the, uh, with the help of that concurrence, we have to obtain a permit from the concerned RTA. Mm. Yeah, regarding more than one district cases, the state transport authority is the, has the jurisdictional power. But the state transport authority has the jurisdiction to issue permits in Kerala only. Beyond Kerala, there is no uh, power to uh, issue permit for, uh, for the state transport authority. But as per section 88, section 88 deals with the uh, permits beyond jurisdiction. There is power is vested with the STA under some conditions. That power is utilizing by the STA in the case of all India tourist vehicle permits. And the entire power to issue guidelines, audits or rules 
are vested with the central government. That is uh, upheld by the Honorable Supreme Court also. The state has no power to interfere with the permits issued in section 888. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, so you already mentioned that uh, the AATP will bring in a competitive environment so that you know more businesses can be uh, brought in. Uh, and uh, when when it comes to uh, AATP, uh, like we already briefly talked about it. So uh, the state governments are opposing uh, the AATP because they are saying that uh, the the tax revenue that ideally should be coming to them is going to the central government when through ATP buses. So like, can you just demystify it for our... No, 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 that is not correct. If state of Kerala is issuing more permit, state of Kerala will be benefited more. In the rules itself, there is a formula for calculating the uh, revenue distribution mentioned, mm -hmm. which is which clearly mentioned. If Kerala is issuing more permit in All India, uh, tourist vehicle permit sector, Kerala will get, get more revenue. Mm -hmm. If if we are not, uh, in this situation we can think that we are not issuing any permit. In such situation, we, we will get zero tax. But the vehicles can be plied from outside the Kerala. Mm -hmm. Some operators uh, from Kerala may get permit from other states, uh, giving some address or uh, details of that state, they can obtain permit from that state, they can fly here also because there is no restriction, then uh, the loser will be our state. Kerala uh, would, I think uh, the, uh, the transport department uh, would encourage the operation of uh, all India tourist vehicles from Kerala giving more freedom for them and then the revenue will be uh, high for Kerala. Sir, uh, so that makes it clear like that was a very uh, huge controversy when the ATP came in uh, that the state governments are, will face a dip in revenue because of the ATP. So I think so it's clear for everyone now so that how the revenue scheme actually works and more ATP per permits means more revenue. So another uh, objection that is raised by the state governments uh, all over is that these AATP buses will actually uh, pose a threat or a challenge or like an anti-competitive environment maybe for the uh, super class or the interstate stage carriage or STU buses that the uh, states operate. So like uh, to uh, what degree can that be considered? In our state, uh, the STU means KSRTC. And uh, KSRTC is flying only this uh, stage carriage permit. Uh, and uh, KSRTC is collecting fares as per their decision. As per Rule 211, I think, uh, of Kerala Motor Vehicle Rules. Yes, you can collect fares as per their decision. And regarding a super class vehicle, means fast passenger or anything like that, they can collect their own fare. There is no such a restriction as of in the case of private stage garages. In, in private stage garages, the uh, fare collection should be according to the uh, direction of the RTA or at present it is statewide there is a uh, there is a, uh, a system is there and uh, government will uh, give a limitation or, or a fair, fair chart will be a, a standing fair chart is there but KSRT is not not to be bound with the uh, government's decision as per the existing rules itself. But regarding the fast passenger or long distance buses of KSRTC and with the All India Tourist Vehicle Permits, there may be some competition. But the Competition Act of India permits such healthy competition for the benefit of the public. Moreover, it is entirely different, the stage garage service of SQ 
and the all india tourist vehicle permits are entirely different normally due to the high rate of tax for the all india tourist vehicle permits for the home state and national level tax it is very 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 high uh, tax considering the normal tax of uh, state but ksrt is not paying any tax you can see yeah ksrt can run and i think uh, with the fair 50% fair of the all india tourist vehicle permit because they need not give any tax to government at present and the normal stage garage tax as for private vehicles is rupees 300 per seat per car normal contra garage vehicle tax is 600 uh per seat per quarter the tax rate is high for uh, contract carriages and all india tourist vehicles vehicles and further the comfort level also comfort level also is high for the uh, all india tourist vehicle permits then the certainly they will collect more fare there is no control at present for the government regarding the fare of all india tourist vehicle etc and uh, while we collecting more fare and ksrtc is very cheap how can ksrtc ksrtc would be getting a threat from all india tourist vehicle permit only i don't think there is no threat further the issue at present was one robin bus flying between patanamitta uh, and coimbatore uh, there is no ksrtc bus flying from patanamitta to coimbatore so that's it guys uh, it's simple economics uh, you provide the quality and then uh, you get the service and if you uh, are willing to pay a higher price then even according to the competition commission of india it's a healthy competitive environment that we have so the atp doesn't pose any threat there Uh, sir, uh, one more minute aspect that we wanted to clarify was uh, in when it comes to the ATP Act uh, or the ATP buses per se, uh, especially in Kerala's context, there was an allegation that the buses can't actually use name boards while flying. So, like, uh, can they or cannot they use those boards? Yes, I think you are mentioning the destination board. Destination, destination board. Destination okay. and uh, normally destination boards are providing with the stage garage normal stage garages yeah. that coimbatore uh, like that yeah. way of, uh, on the uh, uh, points passing etc there is destination boards are there but uh, in, uh, there is no uh, specific mention about fitment of uh, destination board in all india tourist vehicle permit but in the case of stage garages there must be destination boards for uh, stage garages but there is no prevention in the case of all india tourist vehicle permit for the fitment of or pro, uh, providing of uh, destination boards and for the rule 128 specify the conditions or amenities or equipments etc uh, needs with the all india tourist vehicle in that rule there is one rule regarding the lighting many type of lighting is mentioning that in that rule and that proviso uh, not proviso in that sub rule uh, in that sub rule it is mentioned that if a destination board is provided it should be illuminated such a provision is there which means that there is no restriction in providing a destination board for a all india tourist vehicle permit so but uh, the atp also uh, prevents the atp buses from using the uh, bus stands that the stage carriage buses use right yes a atp present atp rules as per the uh, uh, rules uh, the uh, bus stands can be used by the atp uh, permit vehicles and that is very good i think very good uh, very good role because we are uh, we have many best stands many uh, best stop facilities 
uh, of KSRTC and private, uh, why municipal authorities best stands are there. Uh, why, how can we, um, we, we, we have to use entire uh, or efficiently used that area by giving access to all workers, almost all workers. That would uh, give the elimination of connectivity between the uh, contract carriage or all India tools vehicle and stage carriage. If, if I want to go to Bombay, I have to, I have no bus or any ar arrangement from my house to Bombay, my office, etc. like that. I have to come to the uh, city centre, then I have to move to the contract carriage uh, parking area. If the contract carriage is available in the bus stand itself, I can just uh, come to the bus stand and get the contract carriage or all India tours vehicle permit. That, that is a very good uh, change and very revolutionary change. And the government, I, in my opinion, the state government also has to think of uh, uh, to share the SG bus stand also with the All India Tourist Vehicle operators by collecting a small amount of uh, uh, fee, etc. That will be better for their, their uh, revenue collection also. That good. Yeah, so they, what the ATP drives for is not just uh, competitive environment, like more of efficient use of infrastructure that is already available, especially lying idle in many parts yeah. of Kerala. So I think that's a good move from my, our side also. Sir. sir, so when we are talking about the state governments per se and the STUs, uh, so uh, and we are just curious to know like, uh, can, can just the private operators apply for the ATP or like can the STU themselves actually apply for a ATP and get it? That's a very good question. STU, whether STU can apply for All India Tourist Vehicle Permit. If they have an All India Tourist Vehicle bus, they can also apply for uh, All India Tourist Vehicle Permit and they can get All India Tourist Vehicle Permit. Uh, without paying tax for home state because uh, KSRTC is exempted from uh, home state tax, but they have to pay the uh, national fee for all India tourist workers. So the only question there is, uh, can the STUs actually afford to uh, have a bus that is not longer than 12 years in like uh, in the ATP provision, it's mentioned that it, the bus should not be older than 12 years. Yes, yes uh, the all India tourist vehicle permit buses, the age limit is enhanced actually. The, for formerly it was uh, 9 years etc. and now for the benefit of the operators, uh, the age of the buses enhanced. And KSRTC also can uh, get a permit if the, they want a healthy competition uh, with the uh, private operators. They have uh, many facilities uh, stand and other things. They have many facilities. Uh, they can easily compete uh, with the private operators. They, have, they need not pay any tax for the basic state or home state of Kerala. Uh, they have only to uh, pay the tax for uh, the national level tax only. Uh, sometimes the central government may also consider in such cases whether it has to be reduced or like that. There, there may be chances are there. However, uh, I, in my view, uh, the All India Tourist Vehicle Permit would not be a threat to uh, the state transport undertaking uh, conducting stage garage service in the state. So, uh, that's it folks. Uh, so, uh, we try to demystify ATP for you and after the conversation with Anthony sir, we understood that like ATP is not that much complex in itself. So it's simple uh, enough if you are willing to take what what is what is what are given in the permit and what are given in the act. So uh, it ATP in in a sense what it tries for is to promote competition in the public transportation system and bring in more uh, players, increase the quality and thereby increase the scope of public transportation which we are losing in the country and in the state of Kerala especially. So, I think this was informative for you. So, thank you so much, sir, for uh, spending your time with us. Thank you. Thank you so much for to, to, to CPPR and team for uh, giving me a chance to uh, participate in your report. And uh, thank you very much.